Hi, welcome to Vibration Cinema. We're gonna jump right into our music video roundup, starting with Thought Shit by Meg the Hottie. I know everybody was looking for this video, but I actually really didn't like it. I do like a lot of things about this video. I just think that the pieces really didn't coalesce very well. And I keep coming back to the framing of the video. Like it's very clearly directed towards the Ben Shapiro, Ted Cruz crowd who probably watch ebony porn while calling black women like sluts and things like that. And it's like, why waste your energy on that? I don't know, I don't get it. But there are several great moments in this video. The rollerblades on the griddle, the pussy mouth, Meg twerk driving the garbage truck, costume. This hair, my makeup, these expensive ass nails. All great. I'm glad too that uh, that Schaefer kid shared what he and the other booty grips did to create the twerk rigs. Any kind of specialization shot, even something as simple seeming as twerking, requires a team of people to figure out how best to achieve that shot. And I'm glad that the booty grips got a little bit of shine but two hours and 18 days is way too much. Just budget another goddamn day. I'm not mad at the video, but it could have been better, is all I'm saying. This one was suggested by an anonymous submission, and we technically get a three for one. It's Monica's Knock Knock and Get It Off, which together make a sequel to the hit song, So Gone. And first of all, I love when we get two music videos in one, and I also love true R&B storytelling arcs. And all three of these videos create an epic yarn of love, betrayal, jail, moving on, revenge, complete with over-the-top soap opera acting and whatever the fuck kind of room this is where the shower is like right in front of the bed. But Monica looks great here. And I love these freeze frame moments. The transition to get it off is very messy. This club scene, I think is one of the few times that I've seen green light as a primary light look actually really fucking good. And this outro, which folds Get It Off into the story of So Gone and Knock Knock is really clever. Barry was very definitely inspired by this when he was uh, on set for Moonlight. Third, we have Finally by C.C. Penninson. And when I saw this for the first time, like two years ago, I gagged. Like I knew the song obviously, but like I didn't know that it had a video. And honestly, this is the video which inspired um, the music video roundup in the first place because she's really cute here and I love the silhouette of her outfit. I'm definitely stealing it for a future project. These colored shapes are giving very Blue Note record, which I love. Very clearly, as we were talking about these impulses in music videos, we're seeing kinesthetics, we're seeing color blocking. This is very uh, par for the course for that. Apple and the fiance both stole this for their iPod campaign and uh, with green light. Uh, this is a very legendary video and I like when you can do a simple performance video and make it fun and fresh. I also love very conceptual videos, which brings us to Catalina, Catalina, I don't know, by Orange Caramel. Um, it's our first K-pop video. This was another suggestion, but uh, for their sake, to not embarrass them, I'm going to keep the submitter's uh, username secret because you should be embarrassed for liking K-pop. But this is super cute. I love it. The whole sushi theme is genius. Dressing up as mermaids and all these dishes is very fun. I love the mod dresses, the fishbone fascinator, the sashimi dress, the light em up blush, the makeup, you know. The K-pop girlies, I will give them that they are top notch when it comes to costume and makeup. But I do hate people eating, like I hate watching people eating, so points off for that. I don't know why it had to be a whole like set piece. And there's definitely some weird foot fetish thing going on, but it's a really fun video. Um, you know, we've been doing music videos all month long and we haven't really touched on Mariah Carey. So we have to rectify that with the fantasy remix with ODB, which is probably the most influential collaboration of all time. Very controversial when it dropped, but now if you're an R&B girl, you have to have a rapper on a remix. And it's just too bad that they don't add anything beyond just a verse, like they don't actually remix the song. So they're not really like taking the lesson of Mariah Carey, but that's another point. Um, but to the video itself, it's top tier, the tilt shift lens, the Donner Summer Night Sky, ODB in these fucking costumes, the roller coaster shot, which is iconic. Now come on now. I love these little snapshots of the little girl. It's a very like fun, light video, you know, at the little, uh, state fair and things like that. It's really cute. I want to see this kind of casting in like mainstream movies like really off the wall out of left field, you know, risky casting that can redefine how we cast movies in the way that this song rewrote how we can and who we can collaborate with. This is a debut. This is literally everywhere. You couldn't escape it. Want to be by the Spice Girls. I always thought it was a single take actually, but I guess it was two takes stitched together, which is still kind of iconic, you know? And fun fact for you little cinephiles out there, Russian director Alexander Sokharov was inspired by this music video to make the first feature length single take film, Russian Ark in 2003. A lot of similarities if you look really, 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 really closely. But the choreography in this video is like wild, very methodical, especially since they had to switch locations at the last minute. 
This back handspring is a moment in her story. These costumes though are unfortunate, though I did want uh, Scary Spice's pants when I was a kid. And watching this back now, it's really funny <laughs> how Posh Spice literally does not sing. Like they just cast her to be the pretty one, which even then she's like super knobbly need and awkward. So she's not really posh at all. But this is an era defining video. This was suggested by Cherry Blossom Ninja Mixtape 2 by Heavy Baile. This is one that made me really, really fucking happy. All of the teens are having fun, and it's like a compendium of different dance styles across the diaspora. I like how you can tell they just set up at the local park and film this. You have the little kids in the background playing football. It's super cute. But this is what I mean when I say that slow motion is an art form of movement, of kinesthetics. I was really smiling the whole time through. Like, you guys definitely should check this one out. Before we move on, I wanna make note of the framing here. This is what Tom Gunning refers to as the continuity of the frame. Our common sense ideas of continuity is that it maintains the spatio-temporal relationships between characters in a scene. But there are many different kinds of continuity, and of the frame is one of the oldest. It dates back way before the turn of the century with Georges Méliès. It's how he did his cinematic tricks. The frame stays the same, but the bat turns into the human, giving the illusion of a transformation. It's mostly been used throughout history as sight gags, like in here with Sherlock Jr. by Buster Keaton. But recently, a lot of choreographers and dancers have started using it to show the tightness of their choreo. Which brings us to our second and last K-pop video, another suggestion who I won't snitch on, Odd Eye by Dreamcatcher. And, you know, watching this is really interesting because I wonder if there's like a relationship between K-pop and the YouTube choreography kind of cinematography, because these wides and mediums are very reminiscent of each other. Um, but this video is also giving like very Pierre Gitti's, Obayashi's house, Jennifer's body. Again, the K-popers giving good mug, giving good fashion. I don't know why they're looking for Utopia necessarily, and I'm gonna ignore this rap verse, but this is very See You Next Tuesday. Okay, so the only reason why this rah rah bitch is here is because I had a trip down memory lane uh, choosing which videos to pick, and I have a really cute memory of this video. So my first boyfriend and I, we were an open secret, you know, still in the closet, but if you knew, you knew. And I didn't know about Gaga by the time that this video dropped. So he was trying to show me this one in our college like study room. Um, so we spent like 45 minutes waiting for this video to buffer. And then Trey walks in the fucking door and we like shut the video off, pretending, you know, act straight and all this shit. And it's like, okay, there's like other study rooms. Like you can go there, like, why are you here? But um, he pulls out one of those like old internet sticks, you know, for the laptops that they had back in the day. And this motherfucker starts playing the bad romance. And we both cracked up like Jesus fucking Christ. And all three of us spent the afternoon learning the choreography. The play of Atlantis, uh, Alexander McQueen, the Wee Nunchucks, this shot, the two black dancers. It's a good video. And Fame Monster is the only good Gaga, so that's the end of that discussion. Cece, what are you watching? I'm watching a new video, oh. Let me see it. This is an iconic intro. I am a goodies Dan, one of the great debut eras of the Ox. And I was so gay for Sierra back in the day. I bought um, a orange and blue striped hoodie because of this video. It looked nothing like this and I looked fucking ugly in it. But I still loved it. The cargo shorts with the boots, it's a moment. And this right here is why I am not a six on the Kinsey scale. She's so fucking hot in this unmatched sex appeal. I was even eating up this corny shit because I always say, you can't be sexy if you're not a little bit corny. We have another suggestion from Cherry Blossom Ninja. Call Me Baza by Tatika and Pablo Vitar from Angola to Brazil. This one is for the international dolls. First of all, I love when people seem bored doing choreo. Like, yeah, I can do this in my sleep. I think a lot of like modern dancers like go really hard and it's like kind of like jerky stop motion kind of bullshit. So I appreciate Tatika just going through the motions, but this video is all about face. Everybody here is looking right. And I think the message of the video is really nice too. Cooking for your friends brings love and light into the world. But again, with the eating, like food, body, sensuality, it's LGBT culture, I get it, but it's kind of gross. Um, but these prism shots with the Beyonce fan, super self-indulgent, super luxurious, it actually reminds me of our next video, Queen of the Underground by the KB Saint Laurent. What I like about this is that it's a documentary and music video hybrid, and this video gave us one of the most influential and iconic moments of gay history. Only reason why they keep girls like me in the closet is because 
I'll change everyone's way of thinking about our lifestyle. Personally, I think homosexuals are the most creative, intelligent, and the most social people out there. Yes, we make mistakes, but <laughs> they make mistakes too. People are so busy wasting their time bashing faggots when they can be doing something a lot more positive. These are the people you have to worry about. Our whole fucking world is being run by perverted undercover fags that run around talking about how straight they are. You got big time celebrities that go around in, in, in their cars picking up transvestites, having sex with them and then getting on national TV making fun of them. Everything you do in life is like a boomerang. When you throw it, it eventually comes back. Don't fuck with me. This is the kind of carrying on that I miss in LGBT culture right now. Like there's no camp, there's no selfishness, no steaminess. It's all sanitized for straight people. I miss the overindulgence. She's literally framed by photos of herself. She's comparing herself to Marilyn Monroe. Come on. Speaking of camp. Hi, hi. We your weather girl. Uh -uh. And have we got no. This is actually the second video I knew was actually going to be um, in this roundup. Like, what the fuck is going on here? Like, they fell out of the window. Why did they fry Mother Nature's scene like that? What good are all of these homosexual men to single women? They're dressed like streakers, this fucking scene. This man lost his hat in the take. It's a lot going on and I love every minute of it. I know it's like en vogue right now to like ironically like cheesy things, but when we get into the episode in realism, you'll understand why I actually like stand this kind of cardboard paper set design. It's just a lot of fun and it's really rare to see this kind of silliness now. Our comedy is so tainted with irony and deadpan. It's not fun. There's just a joy and stupidity uh, and horny to this video that I really appreciate. I was actually planning on doing the glamorous live so I can talk about this beautifully ugly outfit, but I got an anonymous request for a sex symbol, so we're gonna go with that instead. This reminded me of um, many things that I couldn't place my finger on. Calvin Klein ads, maybe a Madonna video, and then I discovered that Matthew Ralston did this and it makes complete sense. It's fashion meets It's fashion. It's, excuse me, it's fashion. <laughs> Is it, fa wait, what is it, fashion? Again, we have these impulses we talked about in um, Video Kill the Movie Star. Color blocking, body manipulation, kinesthetics. And here goes the fiance again for the partition video. Is she a drag here? Anyway, I love this hair and this top too. Anyway, Sheila E really is a sex symbol. Speaking of Madonna, I feel like I should get at least one music video to dump on. So here we are with like a prayer, this video came out before my time, but I did catch it on I Love the 80s, and I actually liked Madonna as a kid. Ray of Light was like my first or second CD. Writings on the Wall was the other one. Anyway, when I first saw this when I was like 12, I was like disgusted. Like this is very clearly racist as shit. Like she really lets this black man just get gaunt and doesn't say shit to clear his name. And then she dances in front of like clan crosses. Like what the fuck is this supposed to mean? She really tries to find salvation through black Jesus, like James Baldwin would have a field day with this shit. And I get being a provocateur, but you can piss the Catholic Church off without bringing black people into it. Get her away from this child. And why is she dancing like the Scarlett Johansson Flonase commercial? The fact that it's literally just an act is like, <laughs> I just really hate this. All right, Tight by Rod Digger. Rapping while suspended upside down is kind of iconic. Busta Rhymes in his doily t-shirt, that's hot. These transitions are fun. Another great mug, this fake ass crow. It's probably because I was born under Rhythm Nation, but I love black people in industrial uh, areas. I love the whole metallic scheme from the costume to her nails, the way the light warps and blows out on the sheet metal, the furnaces in the background adding warmth, nice touch. Closer uh, by Nine Inch Nails. I actually do remember seeing this on VH1, I think, the edited version. It could be that I'm remembering the controversy around the video, like on Entertainment Tonight or something, but I definitely saw this in some form as a kid. Super weirded out and creeped out, but they did shoot this on old hand crate cameras. And again, recalling our conversation about how music videos retain the spirit of early cinema. This reminds me of like Saw's aesthetic, like you feel grimy watching this, just filth, you can smell it. And it's no surprise because the goat Harris Savidi shot this. His work is always like very palpable. 
Um, but there's great shit in here. The meat angel wings, the Tom Waits goggles. I was gonna say the McQueen crucifix mask that Mother de Brashaw wore, but Dante came out two years after this video. So it's actually McQueen biting off of Ian Curtis or whoever is behind um, Nine Inch Nails. The S&M gear, the nipple mic, the monkey Jack Nicholson comparison. Mark Romanic could be lying, but um, this species of monkey just writhes like that, so it wasn't harmed, but Mark Romanic is also like a very abusive director, so who knows. Our last trip down memory lane is the Eurythmics Sweet Dreams, a title which the fiance famously stole to make a better song. I hated this video growing up as a kid because Annie Lennox scared the shit out of me. Why was her hair that orange? She always looked like a movie villain. And I was right to be afraid of her because she's like a raging racist or something over in Britain um, or wherever the fuck she's from. Anyway, every time this song came on the radio, I would tell my mom to change it because like the scary lady came on. Like I was like, she haunted me, you know? This is a weird one for sure. Like what's with this trippy shit? Why is the cow right up on him like that? Why is the cow serving face? Not this. Oh, look it's at her wig! Big 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 her makeup! Uh, they definitely used a model for this shot because her teeth are not that white. I like this shot. It's giving very fifth floor at MoMA. I've never seen Wuthering Heights by Kate Winslet, but I get that vibe. I've never even seen a David Lynch movie, but I would say this is pretty Lynchian, just weird shit for some reason. Like, why are there so many cows? Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Grace Jones, slave to the rhythm. This is a legendary video. Definitely racist, but what would you expect from Jean-Paul Goud, or any other Frenchman for that matter? Blackface, yellowface, the works. Anyway, this um, is a compilation of her other music videos that um, the two of them did together, like I've Seen That Face Before, My Jamaican Guy, Living My Life, and the concert film One Man Show. Um, and this intro to the making of the video, which is the making of the Slave to the Rhythm album cover is iconic. It's giving very Moy Bridge, which, you know, as we talked about, music videos kind of bringing back old school uh, film technique. We're also talking about these impulses like color blocking and kinesthetics, body manipulation, etc. This is just a nice little summary of her work in the early 80s. Lastly, we gotta go sicko mode. When I said earlier that music videos give us popular experimental films, this is the first one that I thought of. This is in different areas! What the There's like eight music videos going on here, which is okay because there's like eight different songs in the song. The visual gags are great. The noose, the group of exes, shout out to Sparkle, Out Like Light, Drake's uh, little reminiscing on the school bus, the tattooed lyrics, Cut the Lights, the scream ad lib, it's all great. And here we have another kind of continuity, not of the frame, but of framing, right? This is like top 10 transitions of all times. Loved data moshing. I'm actually really curious how they did these scenes. So much is going on, and I think each focal plane is a different shot that they stitched together. Um, these cut up scenes are like Super Saiyan Slave to the Rhythm cover, the lighting on her skin, here's belly. So many good moments of kinesthetic. Um, I love this eclipse scene. There's a reason why Dave Myers is the best. But that's it for our first music video roundup. I hope you enjoyed it. I definitely want to do another one. I know we didn't get to all of the suggestions, but I can probably fit some into the next one. Um, but if you enjoyed this video, like, comment, and subscribe. We will see you on the next one.